Terminology matters. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you go to the doctor or you take your car to an auto mechanic, you'll know that they have their own set of words and buzzwords and terminology associated with whatever it is their scope of expertise is. Well, the same is true for technology. And unfortunately or fortunately, the better acquainted you are with the terminology, the more accurate you can express the questions you may have and understand the answers that you might receive. Like I said, it's as true for medicine and for cars and technology and a bunch of other areas. But of course, I'm focusing here on technology. It is indeed like another language. There's not, I mean, this is one of those things that people often say, I'll just say facetiously, but it's not that far from the truth. There are a lot of words that are associated with technology, computers, software, that you may not necessarily understand, much like people speaking a foreign language. It's all Greek to me, this could very well be true. You don't know what those words mean. Unfortunately, when you're trying to communicate with technical professionals, such as myself, using the incorrect terminology can lead to delays and misunderstandings and even no answer at all. So there's another aspect to this. And this one, honestly, I'm less proud of. It's not that I do this, but I'm actually kind of ashamed of some aspects of our industry. Years ago, there was a vocabulary product that you could buy, and it was advertised heavily. One of the advertising slogans was, people judge you by the words you use. Now, that's true in general, but unfortunately, not using correct terminology can often cause you to be judged improperly by the people you're speaking to. There are absolutely technicians and others who, once they understand that you don't know the terminology, they will treat you differently, usually poorly, than they would if someone came to them and knew the buzzwords. That's unfortunate. It shouldn't be that way, but they're going to do what they're going to do. I certainly try very hard not to do that. I've been doing this long enough that I kind of do get a sense for what people are asking, even when they don't use the right words. I've often joked sometimes that my role here is as much a translator and then a slow search engine because once you know the correct terminology, then the answers tend to appear more readily in search results. But the bottom line here is that, yeah, sometimes it's just not going to work in your favor if you don't know the right terminology. I'm not talking about really deep stuff here. I'm not asking you to know what an L1 cache on your CPU is. However, funny that I should mention CPU. This is a computer. It is not a CPU. The CPU is a single chip inside this box. But along with the CPU, the central processing unit, there's a bunch of other stuff. There's RAM, there's disk, there's adapter cards, there's all sorts of other things that are not CPUs, but they're in the box with the CPU. The box we refer to as a computer. In this case, a desktop or a tower computer, but that's kind of beside the point. It is not a CPU. Another one that I hear from time to time, and it, it kind of surprises me and it kind of doesn't. I had to think about it before it started to make sense. The computer that you might use on your lap is not a lab top. It is a lap top. L-A-B is wrong. L-A-P-T-O-P -P is correct. 
The original intent was that these computers would be used on your lap, hence laptop. Turns out that that's not the best place to use them, but that's kind of beside the point. So where did laptop come from? Well, as you just saw, I had to pronounce very explicitly the two words next to each other to make sure that they were being heard correctly. If you're listening quickly, if you're speaking quickly, it would be very easy to mistake one for the other if you don't already know which one is correct. The scenario that, I, that kind of made this make a little bit of sense to me is that it is very easy to consider, say, a laboratory where computers are being used and that a laptop style computer could be very useful. If you didn't know that it was already a laptop, you might think, okay, it's a computer you use in the lab. We'll call it a lab top. That must be what everybody's saying. Of course, it's not. Now, I do have to be extra clear here. Sometimes it's not your problem. Sometimes it's our problem. For example, the terms that I use a lot, image and clone in the backup space. Well, for some people, what we would refer to as a clone they call an image. And what we refer to as an image, they call a clone. In other words, we can't get our story straight. So obviously we can't expect you to do the same with those kind of terms. So the bottom line here really is that to the extent that you can, try to do a little bit of research, especially when you're about to ask a question, to try to use the terminology that's appropriate for whatever it is you're talking about. I know you're not gonna necessarily have the time or wanna take the time or even be able to find what it is you're looking for. It's hard to find a word for something than it is to find the something for which you already have a word. I get that. But to the extent you can, it helps a lot. Not only in my ability to understand what you're asking, but in your ability to understand my response, and it reduces the number of times I have to ask you, what do you mean by this? Hope that helps. Hope that gives you a little bit of background on our crazy terminology world here in technology. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com 20821. I'm Leo Notenboom, and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.